I'm going to do, I'm going to lay out, laminate up the uh, mask partner. I, on my boats I design an arch mask partner that bolts into the gun rails up ahead uh, where the mask goes through. Uh, right now I'm going to, I've mixed up some, uh, some silver tip uh, uh, laminating resin and I'm going to spread it out and use my, uh, my AARP card and then we'll uh, laminate together and then I'll show you how to hold it in place and bend the ends up. I want uh, two inches of cord uh, distance from the bottom of the arc to the uh, uh, straight line of the cord from the end. So we'll start laminating right now. And just pour a little bit out and dribble it out. Set your other cup on the next part that's going to be done. Trying to get a good soaker coat right now for the uh, grain to pick up as much of the epoxy as I can on this pass. I will butter it up again before I put the next part on or a little on the next piece. Sometimes laminating gets to be a little sticky. I'll keep a cloth around to wipe your hands occasionally. I got the wire here to uh, pre drill the hole to hold everything down. Some more epoxy so it's nice and the uh, surface is still nice and shiny. It hasn't sucked it all up, so I'll bring this around, put that on, put my pilot wire back in. Okay. Now comes the next layer. Okay, I've got another soaker coat on that. Okay, we've got it all laminated up. I can pull out my guide pin now. And I'll drive in my sheetrock screw. And that will hold everything down flush to this 2x6 I've got underneath. Okay, it's in tight. Now I've got a couple blocks that measured out correctly. Now all i got to do is Stick one in under each end, and I'm done. Check to see that you haven't got any gaps. Let that set overnight. I've got it uh, finished. I pre-drilled the holes for my uh, turning blocks and for my uh, jam cleats and then the mast hole will go in the middle and then it bolts through these side holes here into the gunnels with quarter inch stainless steel bolts so once I have it in place and the only thing I have to do uh, with the center line string is uh, set the, uh, the foot, the, the base of the mast uh, the holder I have that I'll put in, we'll do that later but uh, this is what I use on my designs in order to make it removable. If you're not going to go sailing or you never go sailing, then you don't need to make this and you don't need to make the eggerboard trunk. Uh, but if you do sail occasionally, uh, it's removable if you want to just take the family out for a, a row or something and you don't need this in the way. So uh, that's the nice thing about it. You just pull it out and store it someplace. Okay, I've got the Daggerboard case uh, roughly routed out. I'll finish it up with a, 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 a rasp and some sandpaper to round over the edges, and then we'll go on to drilling the holes uh, for the uh, in the bottom for where the centerboard case will be located when I flip it over. So we'll do that. What I'm trying to do now is to uh, drill the holes in the corners of my uh, daggerboard case, so I'll locate them when I flip it upside down, and I can cut out the uh, opening in the bottom of the hole. 
Uh, I have before just set the centerboard uh, or the daggerboard case in the boat, lined it up, and when I knew it was where it was going to be epoxied in, I would draw a line around it and then pull it away and then draw another line inside of that one by a half an inch. That would give me plenty of clearance in order to cut a hole, a locator hole in the bottom of the hull. And now I, I just put them in and I've got this long extension that has a wide uh, spot here where it sets the uh, drill, uh, quarter inch drill set screws into it. So when I press it up against something, I know that the end of the point is going to be away from where the true edge is going to be. So let's drill, get her up, tighten the corner. Case is going to be when I flip it up. Okay, one of the things I did was when I sat in the boat, uh, the front seat, if you'll remember, is why I had the opening between the on either side of the daggerboard trunk into the two cases. Uh, when I sat in the uh, middle seat here, my feet were kind of splayed up and I didn't have enough room, so I had to go in and cut out uh, the spot. I moved the hatch from here on the forward side to the aft side, and it's all cut in, and I was able to salvage the backing plate and mount it to the new position. But now I've got a nice spot for my feet and it's comfortable to roll in. It gives me something to, to push off to get uh, some good leverage. Uh, and now I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to stick in some little seats on the side so that when I'm sailing, I'm not sitting down here in the bottom, but I've got a nice, nice flat seat up on the side that I can move about on. Uh, and then if it's I'm going down and then I can set on the on the uh, either side of the center seat complex. But when you're settling along on a breach or close haul, it's nice to be able to uh, you know if you got some wind to be able to set up a little off the bottom and have a little more flat surface that you can put a pad on. Uh, I can't say that this is going to be completely uncomfortable if I got the right kind of pad stuck in my back uh, to give me some support, so it, it, I can't wait to get it out in the lake. Let's go sailing.